Greetings everyone. I'm going to be talking about my Lance Survival Pack or Lance Adventure Kit. I'll let you guess what Lance stands for. Uh, this is actually a tools only, bare bones survival pack that I use for both urban and uh, uh, wilderness survival. It has actually gone with me on at least 15 to 20 miles of travel, including a solid 10 day hike where I use this to carry all of my basic gear. It is actually a Venturer excursion bag that you can find on militaryclothing.com for $11.99 minus shipping and handling, and they take PayPal. Uh, I bought it for about $14.99 like two years ago, maybe $15.99. It comes in olive drab or black, but uh, I picked olive drab because it's technically a belt pouch, but it is also, it comes with these straps to make a pretty decent shoulder bag, and I usually use the straps with the belt pouch feature, you know, so it's almost like double duty, I can put a lot more in it, since as you can see it is stuffed, but back to what I was saying, this can break the rule for not looking tactical while still being, I guess, kind of tactical, actually. Uh, it blends in pretty nicely, it has a pretty nice color. I used Olive Trab, like I said, because it breaks that rule. You don't have to worry about a backpack that looks military, since it's only a belt pouch. But that's just my opinion, I guess. Now, a couple of notes. This kit does break some survival rules. Uh, the five basics for survival, it only has three of them. Two of them that it uh, basically omits is it doesn't have food and water since I have a canteen for water numerous canteens for water and I have another belt pouch that fits a couple cans of food maybe some dry goods energy bars yeah uh, and it doesn't have a first aid kit inside there because I have another small first aid pack to go with it I usually make my survival gear modular so I can just pick one or the other this however provides the other three and probably the most important, minus, you know, food and water, of course, uh, survival items. Uh, it provides you with the ability to shelter yourself. It provides you with uh, light, heat, and warmth. Well, heat and warmth, same thing. It provides you with uh, signaling and communication, and I toss in a couple other extras in there just for the fun of it. Now, this is actually for communication. This pouch, it holds uh, two ways, or a cell phone, an old school cell phone. Um, but I carry a cell phone in a pocket, and I don't have anyone to talk to with the two ways, so I put a Garrity flashlight in there. There's some uh, lenses in this spare little pouch right here. And if you can find a flashlight that has these, make sure you can find dark red or dark blue colored lenses, specifically dark red. Not just for signaling, but because, I don't know how many of you know this, dark red lights don't destroy your night vision. So you can use it effectively at night and still see a lot. As a backup, I always keep generic little Rayovac flashlight. And for dropping them, if I ever lose them, they're both orange, fluorescent orange. Plus it's a cool color. That's the lighting portion. If I open up right here, I have a black Bic lighter, disposable. I check it at least every month, usually uh, in the weeks, you know. Now this is about a $10 compass, but it's actually very, very reliable and very accurate. I've used it quite a lot of times, including one time to get me out of a, a large patch of woods that I got lost in. It was like a 10 by 10 mile state park or something. Now this is the actual fire starter, the big is just a backup, or for urban use. Cigarettes if you smoke, I don't. Uh, this is a $3, you can find it for more or less, um, magnesium flint stick. They usually come with these, but not all of them do. If you don't, uh, yours doesn't, you can just use a knife. You scrape off some of it on the back, and then hit that with the sparks when you have a nice pile. And uh, it provides you with... There we go. It provides you with some form of quick fuel to get dry tinder going. Now, 
This I tossed in there just for the hell of it. Found it at an antique store for like a dollar. Eight feet micro ruler. This is mainly for setting up camps if you're out in the woods or maybe measuring anything that's worth measuring. Uh, now this part, I actually recommend these highly. Permanent earplugs. These are Heroes brand for playing uh, loud music. Specifically, I got them at Guitar Center because I like to play drums and it's loud as fuck. But open them up and I have, oh, I got disposables in there. I have two orange shooting disposables. Uh, these are generic range earplugs and another one wrapped still. Those are obviously to protect your hearing. If you're in an urban situation, it might be quite loud. And of course, might help you sleep at night too. Uh, this. It's not actually a GPS, although it probably still uses GPS, but this is a camp finder. Sorry, bump the camera. This device remembers three locations. Home, car, and uh, star, which I'm assuming means base camp. You might be able to program another one in there, but it is also extremely accurate, and this is like under 30 bucks. If you get a really, really nice one, you can... Uh, you can find it for like 40 or 50. And of course it has a standard uh, compass feature in there. And now, finally, oh, a little AAA spare battery for my pen light. Now that this pocket is out. Now so far we've covered, uh, well, signaling and communications. You could probably put a little pocket radio in here too if you wanted, by the way. Uh, I have different means of finding out your direction reliably, and now we will move on. Oh yeah, and of course, fire. I tossed this in there just because it was 2 or three ninety nine, BUDK catalog, or BUDK, however you like to say it. It is a nice little stainless steel piece. Um, spoon, fork, knife, all attached, you can't take it apart. Can opener, that does work, because I've used it at least a good 50 times. I do have a kabar that comes apart to give you all of them, the spoon, fork, and knife, in separate, but this is just a toss, you know, throw away for this little pack. Lightweight, too. Now, this is probably the more important of the pieces. It is a Leatherman Surge multi-tool. I leave all of the parts with it, including its extra belt clip in case you don't have the uh, actual case, and the interchangeable wood saw and metal file. Now, I've only used this a few times, but this has as many tools as I would want to own. This is expensive though. I think I paid about 80 bucks for this, plus a dollar extra for the black finish. But this is a must-have. It acts as a knife and tools. It gives you screwdrivers, uh, wire cutters, I think. Of course, a small six to eight inch ruler or something like that. Um, Allen wrenches or something. Uh, in there. Obviously the pliers, saws, files, which I guess you could use to make field expedient tools. Very, very efficient. I recommend anyone have at least even a cheapo version of these. The $30 skeleton versions are pretty nice too. But you will definitely be needing this. Now, oh, I guess I'll have to get to the next part real quick. This is my defense section. Since obviously this is going to be up against my body, I don't have to worry about anything sticking out of the bottom. Because no one's going to see it anyway, it'll be too close to me. And in it, I keep my Glock 23 40 caliber and my spare 10 round magazine. Which gives me 23 plus 1 rounds of 40 caliber ammunition. You could actually put anything in there. Glock 19, the smaller ones, I forget their numbers. Uh, Caltech PF9 would be good. Any decent sized pocket pistol. The high point I have probably would not fit in here though. It's a little bit too big. In fact, medium sized Glocks barely fit. But, you will probably need at least a decent sized 9mm or 380 pocket pistol. Mainly for defense. Um, you could always use a 22 and also use that for small game hunting if you really had to. Cap a few pigeons or something like that, I don't know. Stray dog. But 
we're not talking about that. We're just talking, I don't know, free running, want to have some backup gear, uh, camping out in the woods and keeping your most essential stuff on you, etc. I have different stuff for end of the world kind of stuff. Zombie apocalypse shit hit the fan, you know? Also, in the main compartment, I like to keep the remaining magazines for my Glock 23, giving me 49 rounds loaded in magazines, plus one in the chamber. Of course, the chamber's empty. But, uh, again, you can pretty much use whatever your personal preference is. As long as it's medium-sized, the size of a Glock 19 or 23, or smaller, will fit in that kit. It takes some work, but uh, it won't break on you. It's actually pretty decent. Oh, hey. Always have backups. Kind of like Nut and Fancy's version of redundancy. But some of us don't have the kind of money he does, so this is just a 2 or $3 wrist compass. That being said, if you needed to, a lot of these parts, like this main flashlight here, the Leatherman tool, you could take out of the pack and put on a belt, if you wear belts. I usually do, mainly because I can seal carry, but... Which would mean this would also be in a holster. But, uh, it is, it's pretty good to have extras. Very small, lightweight things, just in case you lose anything. Because you never know, you could drop this, it could break. If the liquid drains out of there, it's useless. The batteries could die on this one. At least this one has a very, very low chance of breaking on you. However, it is not nearly as accurate as the other two. But at least you kind of have a sense of direction. Now this one is an extra I did for myself, uh, you don't have to worry about this at all, but this Rothko uh, Tack Gloves, uh, I mentioned free running before, some people call it parkour with a, an O-U-R, um, if you practice that, you're basically running around and climbing on buildings a lot just for the fun of it. Specifically abandoned buildings. That being said, you will probably need gloves, in fact that you will definitely need gloves, to not only protect your hands, it could also help give you a better grip on your pistol, if it doesn't have good grips on it, but these are necessary for climbing anything that isn't stairs or a ladder, because you could slip, and the last thing you want to do is fall and break something. And then, we move on to the last part. Now, there's supposed to be a secret compartment, but of course the zipper is a dead giveaway, if you can see it in there. Now this, disclaimer, it's not actually what I want in there. Uh, I put in this folded up washcloth to represent a, what's it, a survival blanket. Those uh, mylar blanket things, or whatever the hell they're made out of, look like foil. Uh, this folded up is about the same size in dimensions, if not a little bit bigger, than one of those new in the package. Which means you could buy one for about six bucks and stuff it right in there. And it's not really big enough to make a tent. You could use it for a really cheap tent, or maybe a lean-to. There is an episode of, um, Survivor Man where Les Stroud does use one. I think it's the Rocky Mountain episode. But he had to put sand all around it. But again, at the very least, you could wrap yourself in it, uh, keep yourself pretty warm, although they recommend you be nude when you do that, to kind of the same principle as a baked potato, but uh, I don't know. So that's the shelter, signaling and lighting, heat, and of course fire helps to cook food, a little something extra to actually eat said food, earplugs for protecting your hearing. Three different ways of either A, finding your way back to camp, or just general direction. Some extra toys to play with. Gloves to help you grip, and decent, well actually, more than adequate self-defense. But again, this part is interchangeable. In fact, all of these parts are interchangeable. But I would recommend everything that is viewed right about here, you keep. That being said, Again, this is my little uh, Venture Survivor bag, and it is very affordable, and it is the very basic bare bones kit, my Lance Survival Kit, and uh, that's my video, hope you enjoyed it, peace.